Hello everyone, this is Matthew Bisson thomas from TrainFirm. I'm the Chief Trainer and Principal Consultant of TrainFirm. Today I'm going to discuss with you a very simple but very useful tool which we generally use in our Lean and Six Sigma projects. It's called as the Control Impact Metrics. And uh, one of the best part of this tool is, you know, this, this tool is phase agnostic in your project um, because this tool can be used in any of the phases, right? Uh, if you have to consider your Lean Six Sigma project or DMAC project, this can be very well used in the measure phase, in the analyze phase, and sometimes even in the improve phase. So one tool, if you learn, you can use it in multiple areas. So it's a very, very easy and uh, useful tool. And uh, the same applies in the case of a lean project where you draw out your current state value stream map and you may have identified all your non-value adding activities and also also you would have brainstormed the reason for those non-value adding activities and if you have to shortlist a few of them from them or if you want to prune that list of or the exhaustive list of uh, reasons what you have identified, you go ahead and use this control impact metrics. It's basically to uh, to prune the list. It's to screen your variables, your factors or your X's, whatever you may call it, to a manageable list. Okay, so since I have given enough uh, introduction to the tool, now I think you know it's time for us to go and see for ourselves how this tool can be put so that it gives you maximum results. Okay. What you see on the screen now is a two by two matrix, or in fact, it's a three by three matrix. You know, I've made it a little bit elaborative because if you want, you can even limit it to a two by two matrix, right? So um, this is a three by three metric um, where you know you have in your x axis you have got the impact, and on your y axis you have got the control. So let me start with your y-axis. In the y-axis, I have put three dimensions to control. One is a high control one, the middle one is a medium control, and the lowest is, is the low control, and the, the, the last line, which you can see, is low control. Similarly, I've done a bifurcation for the impact as well. Right, you have got high impact ones, medium impact ones, and the low impact ones. Okay, so now I have explained to you the x and y-axis. You may be wondering what are those little buttons what I have given here, right? You know, for just for explanation's sake, I have, I have listed down around nine variables here. You may go ahead and write what that variable here can give a short description here. And uh, I've given some color coding, basic color coding. Yeah. It's basically whenever you do a project and do a brainstorming to categorize it, to basically affinitize it, you know, we go ahead and do a grouping right you know we try and group these factors under people process technology policy measurements so on and so forth and that's a simple thing what i have done here so you know i've used colors instead here so you can you can refer to those colors uh, and then go with these terminologies basically understand that okay if i have a blue color in here what i'm referring to is is, is a factor which um, relates to people right so that's um, that's all about the color coding we have given here. So let's take a uh, thirty seconds to understand what what do you mean by control and what do you mean by impact, right? So control is something what I can define as the ability to influence, right? If you have an X in your hand, um, what is the ability to influence that X? The performance of that X. Uh, say, for example, if you want to reduce the intensity of that x if you want to increase the intensity of the x or even if you want to cancel the effect of that x do you have influencing ability that's the question if you have an influencing ability then i would say that you know i have a high control over that x and your ability to influence is medium that means sometimes you can control it but sometimes it happens purely in a random way then i would call that as a medium control one that means you know I have very less control sometimes and sometimes you know I have some control over it and for those things which I have absolutely no control on it and it absolutely behaves in a random way I would call that as a low control one and similarly for the impact consider the same factor or the X right 
how much impact can that make onto my project Y, which is very, very important. My project Y is the problem what I'm trying to solve with my Six Sigma Lean project. If you are trying to increase the accuracy levels or if you are trying to reduce the turnaround time levels, that becomes your project Y. So you need to think that X, what you're talking about, the potential X you've identified through brainstorming, what kind of an impact that X can make on your Y. Either it could be a turnaround time or an accuracy, or it could be anything what you're trying to solve for. So if you feel that, you know, this particular X has high impact and it can create a difference to your Y, then I would certainly call that as a high impact one. But if you feel that, you know, it has only a moderate impact, right? Uh, then I would put it in a medium category. And if you feel that, you know, no, there is no way it can impact my project Y, then, then I think, you know, it may not be the right thing at all to look at from a project perspective, it could be a variable, but you know, you may not be interested in that variable for your particular project. So this is how we will lay out uh, this tool, control impact metrics. You will have control onto the left side, uh, which is your Y axis, and you will have impact listed on your X axis down here. So you can either keep it as high and low and keep it simple, or if you want to make it a little more complex, you can introduce medium in here. So the way in which I would look at this tool, right, is as I told you, you know, we will use this to prioritize or prune, right, or screen the list. So how do you do that, right? Quite logical. It's, it's no rocket science. It's just simple um, common sense. If I have any of the factors figuring in this grid, what is this grid? This grid is high control and this grid is high impact. Right. If I've got any variables out of this nine or 11, what I've put in here is that if there is anything which is figuring out in this grid and those are the most powerful X's, which I will pick up first, either to do a hypothesis testing or for any statistical validation, or even if I have to directly go for solutioning, these are the ones which I will pick up first. Right. Once I exhaust all of those variables, which figures out in this particular grid is when I will move here. But again, I'm not compromising on my control. I would really want to have high control over it, right? But I'm okay, even if the impact is medium, I would go ahead and take that as my second choice, right? You know, first I have exhausted all high impact, high control ones, and I'm now I'm gonna go behind the high control and the medium impact ones, which we'll figure out in this. And then as it goes, you know, once you exhaust all these things is when you'll try and see, you know, if you have figured something in this grid, basis the discussions what you have had right then i will go ahead and exhaust this and again it, the, the journey follows uh, and it continues and i will come again to the high impact medium control ones high impact um, medium impact and medium control ones and then finally low impact and medium control ones and finally if i have exhausted everything right um, once you evaluate everything, you know, it may take place in any of these six grids, what you see here. And once you have completely consumed all of those variables and you have taken, that's when, you know, you will come to the lowest grid. And out of the low, in the lowest grid and the low, in, low and low, where I have got low control and low impact, are certainly ones which I really don't want to mess around with and spend my time on. Because I know for sure that, you know, I'm not going to get any result out of it. So I may look at high impact and low control and medium impact and low control basis, my bandwidth availability and the criticality of the project uh, and the level of accuracy or um, to the extent which I have to reduce my turnaround time. So this is, this is a quick tool what you can use to prune the list, to screen your potential access out of the 100 access you have identified through brainstorming. You would go ahead and do a bucketization. You will put it into people process technology. And the next step is to see that, you know, okay, now that I've got 100 in my hand, how many should I go ahead and use it for my project in my hypothesis testing or for, for solutioning of it? So this tool is going to help you in doing that activity. I hope that you would have understood it to a higher level now, but let me use a very small and simple example, which every one of us can follow. Is a tea making process right when you are talking about tea making process there are 10 steps what we generally do to prepare a tea right you know right starting from filling the normal water into a pan and then heating it up adding sugar uh, adding milk and finally you know you strain it and then you will you, your tea is ready to be served right you know so there are 10 different steps everybody follows to make a 
basic steps everybody follows to make a tea. That's a simple tea making process, right? So I have got two aspects to explain here. One is the KPOV, it's called as the key performance output variable, right? Which is essentially the project why what you are solving. In the previous slide, I showed you that, you know, it could be accuracy or it could be turnaround time, right? So something similar to it in a tea making process is the temperature while serving, right? You know, that is a very important metric to me. I don't want to, I won't, I don't want to offer a tea which is ice cold to somebody unless somebody wants to have iced tea, right? And then the sweetness of the tea and there is a particular level in which my recipient would enjoy tea, right? If it's diabetic, I would really want to have it very less in sugar but if he is a normal person certain palates are you know sweet tooths they want high sugar content certain people so i will fix that parameter right you know i will say that okay this is the parameter which i want to really optimize and this is where you know the operating range of it and then the strength of the tea some people ask for strong tea and then the aroma of course you know you sip it and then you smell it right and with the aroma you should feel good you know these are the combination effect right only then you know you will somebody will say that your tea is Maybe it is bad or ugly, whatever, right? And this KPIVs are nothing but the excess. We were just talking about in the control metrics, you know, putting them in different grids. These are the little ones what we will try and put in there, right? These are your potential excess, which may have impact on your Ys, may not have. So that's the whole exercise what we are trying to do. So even before we get there, we want to prune this list. You know, you have got around 23 different factors identified after brainstorming. Now it's our turn to prune this list i don't really want to take all the 23 for my project you know i want to identify the strong ones which are high in control and high impact to be taken for my solutioning because that's going to give me bigger results right you know for the amount of time time and amount of money i spend on this project i want the maximum benefits to come in so i want the high control and high impact ones to be selected first and I take all these 23 and try and put it in the grid. What you see here, right? It is very important that I put all the 23. I will list down all the 23 here. And I will, one by one, I will try and put on these grids and see that, you know, where it comes. So obviously, some of the examples in this is very, very thought-provoking, right? You know, what are those excess which we have least control on? Temperature of water, ambient temperature, absolutely. And temperature is something where we may have controlled a very little amount of time, right? I mean, you eventually you may not even have control over it because you know if you you cannot have a chamber at a fixed a temperature throughout the day, throughout the year, for somebody to come in and have coffee. We generally have coffees outside, a lawn, sometimes in our dining hall, sometimes in a drawing room. And it depends on the country in which we serve the tea as well. Cold, cold areas, you know, the ambient temperature could be negative, right? In tropical climates like Mumbai and Bangalore, um, all of those places, you know, the temperature is around 27, 28 degrees, right? So there is a difference. And we may not be able to control it fully. So I, to me, to me, it is not definitely um, a, a parameter which has high control. No, it is... Uh, just of um, probably a moderate control or sometimes no control over it. So it's a low control factor for me. But from an impact perspective, it has a large impact. It's a big impact because, you know, in a nice cold country, the moment you take out the tea from the kettle that gets cold, right, it has a high impact, but um, very low in control. So eventually, what when we, when we try and fix this variable, it may come in here, right, in this grid where you've got high impact but very low control right so i may not be able to do much about it right i may have to live with it or maybe i may have to use another factor which can influence this factor so that you know i can get an optimum temperature right so these are the kind of insights you will get from these control impact metrics and eventually um, you know in this exercise also what you're trying to do is that you know let me take out five or six of the key important excess from this list of 23 and move ahead with my project right i hope you could you could follow the slides and you could make good sense out of the slide um i wish you all the all the best in using this tool for your project and getting maximum um, beneficial results uh, if you've got any questions please do not hesitate um, send us an email uh, on info at the rate We will try and give you a 
resolution to your query and if required we can always get onto our webex um, and try and solve your query thank you for watching this video and you have a great day ahead